Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Jacob Salazar's presentation, Dreams in Haiku. Um, I think for those of you that came a little early, you've already heard him talk about what's going to be happening. Uh, he'll have about a 20 minute presentation, and then we'll go into breakout rooms for approximately 20 or 25 minutes. So please make sure you stay on mute so you can hear it all. Jacob D. Salazar wrote his first haiku in 2006. <clears throat> he is the author of Mar Librium, Haiku and Tonka uh, from Lulu in 2020, and the co-author of Echoes, a collection of link verse poetry with Michelle Hyatt, also from Lulu 2020. Jacob has also edited haiku anthologies, serves as a co-commentator, on the Haiku Commentary blog with Nicholas Kozanski and Hithos, pardon me if I'm not pronouncing it right, Ashof, and is the founding editor of the Haiku Poetry Interviews blog. You can find his website's information pasted in the chat, and I have just um, had those ready here for you so that um, I'll I'll activate that in just a second. So please welcome Jacob. Thank you, Sarita. And thank you, Jay, and everyone at HSA for making this possible. It's great to be able to come together across so many different places uh, for this event. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me share my screen here. Okay, can everybody see this okay? I'm gonna see Jacob, he's our mentor. Sarita, can you see the um, Word document? I can see it, but it looks rather small. Okay. Does it look small to other people? I increased the size. No, it looks Ms. good. Uh, okay, good. In Ms. your window, there's a line between both images with a little dot in it or a little... Uh, a little short, a short line in the middle. If you grab that and pull it to the right, the left-hand screen will get larger and the right-hand screen will get smaller. Okay, let me see here. You see there's a dark line between the two images and there's a little lozenge of a line right in the middle. Jacob changes that, that doesn't affect how we see things. Everybody has to change it on their, their oh, yes. own. Yes, everybody has to change it on their own screen. Sorry, I meant that, yeah. Okay, yeah, as long as everybody can see it, okay. I've zoomed in pretty far. I mean, I can zoom in a little more. Yeah. It looks clear to me now. Can every, anyone else have a problem with it or can they all see it? Yeah. It looks good. No. You okay. can pinch it up if you want to on your phone. It looks clear. Okay. Could you go into full screen? And then we won't have all your um, menus at the top. Oh, okay. How do I do that? Uh, it might be the box next to the X. I don't know. I have a Mac, so I don't. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just leave it like this. As long as you guys can see it, that's all that matters. <laughs> okay, uh, my presentation is called Dreams and Haiku. Uh -huh. And I'll start with a quote from my favorite movie, Waking Life. They say dreams are real only as long as they last. Couldn't you say the same thing about life? Um, dreams have been an integral part of haiku for a long time, and they continue to have an important place in haiku today. So I discovered that dreams and haiku can do at least four things. Dreams and haiku can encourage us to have empathy and compassion for the subjects in the haiku. They can signify hopes and visions for the future. They can inspire our imagination and they can be portals into the past. So we'll dive into some examples. Um, dreams also are found in hoku before haiku was invented. And so 
we have this one by Basho. Rank summer grasses where warriors went to war, traces of their dreams. Dreams may inspire us to have compassion for the warriors in this hoku. We might imagine their dreams of returning home to their families. We may also wonder what their dreams were like for their future or the afterlife. This one also by Basho, ill on a journey, dreams in a withered field wander around. In this hoku, Basho's wandering dreams speaks to his spirit as a traveler and a wanderer. This was the last poem that Basho wrote before he physically passed away. We might imagine the dreams he had as he was approaching physical death. This one is also by Basho. Octopus traps, dreams vanish under a summer moon. This hoku brings compassion for the octopus and shows how our dreams, like their dreams, will soon vanish. The octopus traps could also be a metaphor for the consequences of having a closed mind. And we have this one by Busan. Morning fog, the road full of people from a painter's dream. This haiku uses a dream to signify the painter's imagination or a vision that has come to life. In turn, it can inspire our imagination. Similarly, we, our imagination can wander in dreams in this haiku by j Rap. Dreaming, the buds of cherry trees blanketed by snow. The buds of cherry blossoms could be metaphors for the beginning of a dream or new ideas in a dream arising from the subconscious. In this haiku, as winter transitions to spring, it seems our winter dreams or dormant ideas are coming to life. But I like how j Rap gave us room for dreaming in this haiku. Dreams and haiku can also convey uh, future wanderings in nature, or they can reflect on memories, as in this haiku by Michelle Hyatt. Old sheepskin mucklucks, dreams of snowshoeing covered in dust. Dreams of snowshoeing could be her memories of snowshoeing and or her plans for future adventures that seem to have been delayed for mysterious reasons. So in this one, it could be a portal into the past or dreams could be portal into the future. Dreams and haiku can convey hopes and visions for the future as in this haiku, electric guitar, the reverberation of teenage dreams. I had to include that one because I grew up with an electric guitar so I can relate to this one. Um, dreams are also found in indigenous spirituality in the spirit of animals, we can try to imagine what their dreams might look like, as in this haiku, autumn evening, I step into the owl's dream. And I'm grateful this one got published in the Seebeck uh, um, Getaway Anthology. And it's also found in my new book, Unplugged, that um, I could talk about at the very end, but it's published through Lulu. So that gives us the four uh, reasons why dreams and haiku can be powerful and uh, very effective. So using these four interpretations of dreams, um, the vision is for the breakout rooms to practice writing haiku with dream or dreams in the poem, and then take turns sharing your dream haiku in small groups, but then also um, talk about your dreams is also, that's also encouraged. Um, so to recap, dreams and haiku can encourage us to have empathy and compassion. They can signify hopes and visions for the future. They can inspire our imagination and they can be a portal into the past. 
And um, I do have this as a handout. And so everybody should uh, be able to access it later too, if you want to use this uh, for future workshops. And then um, in this um, material, I also have more links that we can share too in the chat later. So let me stop share here. And then um, if you don't want to do the breakout rooms, now is a good time to uh, leave or pause, do what you have to do. Um, but yeah, I'd love it if we can do the breakout rooms for 25 minutes. Actually, I talked pretty fast, so we could we could do 30. I think that would be even better. <laughs> um, yeah, I did put the I did create the handout. So yeah, we'll get that to you either by email. Um, I can also share some links in the chat here. Just give me one second. Okay, Jacob, I shared some of your links already, but I but I don't think I shared the handout link, if you have a link to that. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have a link to the handout, but I have it as the Word doc and a PDF file. So I can include my email address, and then um, okay. anybody who wants it could email me. So let me put that in the chat. Oh, thanks for posting those links. Okay, so my main site. So you can find the title of his books as well as the book in the chat as well, also. <laughs> okay, Ignatius. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes, um, as far as the breakout rooms go, um, I can I can turn them on, but do you want me to do anything else as far as numbers go? Or no, it's all laid out. Uh, and okay, then perfect. We'll just all keep right. an eye on people. Then we we'll review the rooms and see if there's any that have too few people, and then we'll move people around. But okay, that's got to be done um, pretty quick. Okay, um, I'll do my best on that. Um, it's set for thirty minutes. Okay. All okay, you have to 30. do is hit open all rooms. Okay, and they'll automatically come back after that 30 minutes? Uh, after, uh, yeah. yes, and they have a 60 second warning before. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, so Jacob, you let us know when you're ready to start the breakout rooms. Oh, I am definitely ready. Um, yeah, I just okay. want to give people a few minutes in case they wanted to leave or not do the breakout. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think we can do it now. Okay. I think they can always just leave the breakout room if they don't want to be in it too, can they? Yeah. I'm sure they can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They could even just listen if they don't want to like share anything. <laughs> okay. So it's 312 now. So 30 minutes with that would be 332 approximately. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go with breakout rooms. Hello. See, already we, we got room one that has only two people in it. And room two has three people. So we could move one person from room one to room two. And then another the other one to room three. Hi. Hi, I'm all alone. You're alone? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to uh, uh, let me just see here. How do I get out of here? I'm going to leave the room and I'll move you. Okay. Okay, you're in room what? I think it's 20. Okay. That happened to two person group. I, yeah, we, I can't. Are there 45 in our breakout room? Yeah, that's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, it is. You're right, in that. Yeah, I'm confused. And yeah. so that, really? 30 minutes from um, 312 would be 342, not 332. 
Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. I, I, I was in a breakout room, but there was nobody else there. So this is the main room, I think. Yes, no, there's only two pages I was, here. So I was trying to move people yeah. around, but um, it's a little bit hard to see. Sorry, um, Greg. It's been a while. Hey, Greg. I'm in room 26. Hi. Nobody else came. Good to see you. I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. It's good. Been a this, while. Is a, this is a great subject, isn't it? <laughs> so yes it uh, is so why don't we just kind of people someone start with uh, reading some of their some dream haiku if they have them or to maybe to make a comment first about dream haiku i think so are we all in room, one if i may i think <laughs> this is the main room on the bottom right. of your screen if you click breakout rooms it should bring up the room you were invited to, and then you click join breakout room and you can go into it if All you right. choose to do that. Some of us I, didn't oh. go into breakout rooms and we're here. I was on room 26 and I was there on my own. So I'll go back and see if anyone joins me. Hey, is anyone? I don't see any button that says breakout room. I don't, I don't, either. Either. I don't, I don't have a breakout room button. I don't either. <laughs> I don't either. On the bottom of your screen, do you see participants chat share screen? Yeah, I see yes. participants. And you don't see breakout rooms? Nope. Ah, no, it's, well, it's after record and before reactions. <laughs> no, it has share screen and then record and then reactions. Reactions and apps. And apps. Wait for it. Uh, back to you, Ignatius. <laughs> hmm. Doesn't have breakout rooms. Yeah. Usually uh, get the a notice that says invited to join a break breakout room and then you click uh -huh. yes. <laughs> is is anyone opting to stay to toss me into one? <laughs> is anyone opting to stay in the, the main room rather than go to a breakout room? Yes, I, I wanted to go to a breakout room. Yeah, I did too. I, I'd rather have a smaller space. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, a break, breakout room would be nice, but I have no idea what went wrong, but I'm busy moving people here. <laughs> Thank you, Ignatius. <laughs> For one thing, there was way too many rooms. I don't know why how there were so many rooms. Hmm. Um, maybe it was working on that higher number from before. Could be. Yeah, actually, I I just went in, into the uh, my uh, uh, invited the uh, uh, break room, and then there is breakout room. There is only me there. <laughs> yeah, that's no fun. That's not what, fun. what room are you in? <laughs> uh, room five, I thought. <clears throat> yeah, say, same thing happened to me. I just, I just left. There was only me, myself in the room. Mine was no. like twenty-three or something. Yeah. Yeah. So I got lonely, so I, 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 uh, I, I came out. <laughs> well, we have four people. That makes uh, for another breakout room right here. Yeah, we have forty-two on my screen. I've got 42, 42 unassigned. 42. So there, yes, I have 42. There's a lot of people that are unassigned. There's a lot of you that are unassigned. So who wants to be assigned? I guess it's what I need to find out. Gregory, did you want to be assigned? Yeah, mm -hmm, please. Okay. I, I, don't I do. This is yeah, I do. Didn't assign. Okay, I see. Yo. This is Ray Kellinger. You can assign me to. Why doesn't everybody want to be assigned? Raise your hands, and then they can just okay. join the rooms. Right. Well, I mean, on the your your software hands. Wait, where is it? Under reactions, Paula. At the, at the bottom, go, it's either on the top or the bottom. If you go to the far right side, okay. hit the three dots. Five. There should be a hand at the bottom. Uh, okay, it's a. Mm. Well, cheers to everybody. <laughs> cheers. Having fun yet? <laughs> it's six o'clock in Florida. <laughs>
Okay, is everybody in breakout rooms that wants to be in them now? No, I'm not. You're not yet, right? Okay. No. I'm not either. Hmm. I guess Ignatius is helping me with this too. He's yeah. busy moving people around. And I'm trying to find Ray's name in the list here. Caligiuri is the last name, Ray yeah. Caligiuri. I'm just looking for it on oh, the Oh, there he is. He's not joined. He was supposed to be in 25. Yeah, but there was nobody there but me. Yeah. So let me find a spot for you here. I'll put you in room 16. Okay. That sound okay? That's fine. And Kate and um, Pippa? I, I'm ready. <laughs> That's all right. This is I saw you added me, added me to that room, but it doesn't prompt me to go in there. I don't Is have any ready? prompts yet either. Wow. Not as easy as it looks, I'll tell you. Pip, I just moved to eight. I don't know how to force you to join. Yeah, something's, something's haywire about this thing. Well, there seem to be three of us that want to join a room. Why don't we just do it right here? <laughs> yeah, you could. Might as well. So do we want to just introduce ourselves and then, you know, start start doing them? Yeah, why don't you go yeah. ahead, because the, the, there's a glitch in the system here. Okay. Uh, my name is Ray Caligiuri. I've been doing haiku now for about three years. Um, I, uh, I live in Beaverton, Oregon, which is a suburb of Portland, Oregon. And I just, while I was in the breakout room by myself, I just wrote, <laughs> with closed eyes, we skim the sun as wing wax melts. With closed eyes, we skim the sun as wing wax melts. I guess the question is, do you get the idea that this is a dream? Everybody seems to be muted. It wasn't real evident to me that it was a dream, but I'd like to hear it one more time. With closed eyes, we skim the sun as wing wax melts. Wing wax melts? Yeah, Icarus, Greek, Greek mythology. Icarus. Oh, okay. too close okay. to the sun. Okay, now I got it, okay. That sort of came as a surprise and my mind was going a different direction with the eyes closed thing yeah I will. Uh, Go ahead. well instead of close your eyes maybe there's another way to um to let us know a little bit more that it's a dream mm, i'm not sure exactly okay. how i noticed that uh josh actually used um um i mean jacob actually used dream in some of his I don't know if there's a substitute word for dream, really. I know you were trying no, me, to be a little more slant about it, but let me let me think about that. Maybe I can come up with a better starting line that sets that sets the stage more. Anyway, I'm thinking now. <laughs> you, nobody else was giving you feedback, so I figured I would. <laughs> Thank you, Serena. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Sorry, I'm more focused on these rooms and trying to straighten them out, but I think it's getting late enough that I might as well leave them. I don't see anybody that's by themselves, and they, there's at least three, if not more, in each room now. Yeah, but we got rooms like room 18 has got four people in it, but none of them are joined. Yeah, does that mean they just decided not to? Oh, that might be. That might be. Yeah. Okay. Well, all, all, most of the cameras are frozen now. So I hope they're not limbo somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you can end up in limbo on Zoom sometimes. So somebody corrected me on the time. It was actually 3, 3 40, 42. Yeah, something like that. But it's still, yeah. it'll, it'll, it'll go in 30 minutes. So, and that's plenty early. So, Sarita, how about settled in bed, we skim the sun as wing wax melts? I hate to use the word dream. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, how I about, understand how that. How about asleep in bed? Yeah, okay, that goes. That might that work. Works. I would say read them all again. I'm not really sure. And the second one, I didn't really hear it well. I, wrote, I, I put settled in bed. We skim the sun as wing wax melts. And then Sarita suggested a sleep in bed. We skim the sun as wing wax melts. I think I like a sleep. Oh, I like that, Sarita. That's a sleep has a nice sound to it, too. Yeah. How about rapid eye movement? I was just going to say that. Why don't you have a little Ooh, bit more? more that's an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more scientific or REM sleep or something like that. REM sleep is good. REM sleep. Yeah, I like that. That's what I thought of first. And then I you know, figured it's still five syllables or so. It's not too yeah. long to have it be right. rapid eye movement. Yeah, and then you yeah, don't just... have to add the word sleep. REM needs an explanation. But rapid eye movement, you don't need to add sleep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Nice collaborative haiku. Rapid eye movement. We skim the sun as wing wax melts. Yeah, yeah. I, I initially had an eye skim the sun, but then I thought, well, it kind of makes it more interesting. Who's, well, who's the we? Why, why is How? the we involved there? How about switching the last two lines? Because you're not skimming the sun as the wax melts. The, the wax melts as you skim the sun. Cause and effect. As rapid eye movement, as wing wax melts, you skim the sun. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Wing wax melts as we skim the sun. Oh, oh, oh. It is oh, the wax means. that's melting as you skim the sun, not the skimming the sun as the wax melts. There's a cause and effect. I see. Let's try that. As we skim, or as I, as we skim the sun, wing wax melts. Just wing wax melts as we, as we skim, skim, the skim the sun. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. And that's my process too. I usually never take whatever comes first to mind. I <laughs> usually have to go through many iterations of moving yeah. things around before I look. I'm just looking at the, trying to get cause and effect. It's melting because we're getting close to the sun. Yeah. Rapid eye movement. Wing wax melts as we skim the sun. That's good. I think that implies dream. I think so. Anybody that thinks you're really flying close to the sun, well, <laughs> <laughs> they have a loose grip on reality themselves. Now, what happens after that? Well, that's a good point. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about you, but a lot of my flying dreams, or no, I shouldn't say flying, falling dreams. When I wake up, it almost feels like the bed is springing back up, like I just fell and fell into the bed, and it feels like the the mattress is springing back from my hitting the bed. Now, obviously, I wasn't. I wonder if we could build build this into a tonka. You know, add two more lines. Mm. on that to, to make it a tonka. Mm. So you, you, you said something about the, the bounce of the bed. Yeah. The bed the, bounce. You know, the bed rebounds or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, you know, if you fell on a mat, you know, and it, it, it hits and then it springs back up as you I always get the feeling from a falling dream that I was actually falling and I fell into bed. Let's try that. Hang on. I what have one. The bed rebounds upon impact. Yeah, I, I got the bed rebounds. I think that's a good fourth line. I'm still looking for a fifth line. I, I want to do something that, you know, kind of re anchors you in reality. So what do you have so far? Read, read us what you have at this point. I have, I have rapid eye movement, wing wax melts as we skim the sun. The bed rebounds. So are you making it into a sequence or what? I, I, I was going to do a tonka. Oh, a tonka. Just one, okay. one, just one more line. I sort of liked ending ending with the the melding wax myself. I don't know about the rebound part. Mm-hmm. I had one that I think is. I find one white feather sudden visit. Say that again, Serena. I find one white feather sudden visitation. You know, I like the idea of the white feather. That's a good image. I'm wondering if we could have something about, you know, it, it kind of disappears or fades away. The, the last white feather fades away. Hmm. I'll make note of that and think about it. The Brave Hill drones will quit in 30 seconds. White time goes by in a hurry. <laughs> When we're switching people in different rooms. Um, this is Helen. I have a question for moderators or whoever. Uh-huh. Um, when when we're sharing uh, poetry in this event, is that make it published because the event's being recorded? Just curious. No, I don't. No? I wouldn't consider it public. No. Okay. That's a good question, though. But often workshopped mm-hmm. poems aren't considered mm-hmm. published, and this is like a workshop. So okay. you can consider it yeah. that way. Okay. I'm being asked. Now to it's jo- asking me to join a room. To join again. <laughs> I know. That's weird. I think yeah. we don't want to do it, right? No. Yeah, I think it's just <laughs> left over from before. It's still saying all breakout rooms will close in 53 seconds. Oh, okay. Everything's weird in the dream, and this is a dream. <laughs> you're, all, you're all just dreaming that we're 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 still in the breakout sessions. I just got out of the shower. <laughs> we're suspended <laughs> in dreamland. <laughs> are you in a group or are you out? I didn't want to interrupt a group. We're we're all one <laughs> big happy group now. <laughs> now we're becoming a bigger bigger group. Yeah, the breakout sessions have ended. Jacob. Hey, hello. Oh, hi. Hi, Wakako. Hi. <laughs> I get to see your face. I know, good to see you. <laughs> finally, finally, I'm back. Gar- oh, yeah. Garapata State Park was awesome. It was oh, really you liked it. Uh, dreamy, you know. 
<laughs> oh, good. Place Next time you come, we'll have to connect. Yes, definitely. definitely. We have to. We have to uh, give the platform back to Jacob. So he has to, uh, unless there's specific questions, uh, it, we have to let him speak. So Jacob, I have a question. <laughs> okay, go for it. This is Cindy here. Um, Jacob, I was curious. Um, we kind of had a discussion in our group, um, whether it's dream haiku or daydream, daydreaming uh -huh. haiku. Uh, have you done uh, writings with daydreaming? Oh, we talked about that in my group too. Um, oh. One poet, Melanie, she did share a daydream haiku. Um, yeah, and that's encouraged too. I've seen daydream haiku before and I think it's interesting. Um, I don't think I've written one personally myself, but uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. I think it's, it's interesting. Um, any kind of dream. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I guess what the one What do you mean note by daydream? Um, daydream uh, writing. At least for me, like in our group, when we talked, uh, there's kind of a mutual conclusion that uh, if we're going to include dream and in haiku, it's important to have a balance because dreams are so abstract that um, if we have something very concrete and specific to ground the poem, um, then the dream haiku will be more powerful, more effective. So like the one I shared in my presentation and the Seabeck anthology, um, autumn evening, I step into the owl's dream. So we have autumn evening, you know, it's very relatable and has atmosphere, but then, you know, the owl's dream is very abstract. And so we have that balance, but uh, yeah, I would say the same probably with daydreaming too. If I, I don't remember the exact poem um, by Melanie, but it had to do with the, uh, like a needle lost. I, in I, I put it in the chat. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, do you want to read it out loud, Melanie? Sure. Her sewing needle in the carpet, sudden daydream. So yeah, we were talking about how the sewing needle in the carpet, of course, is very concrete, relatable, but how that can conjure up uh, daydreaming. It's just very interesting. Thank you, Jacob. I, I'm confused. Was there actually a sewing needle in the carpet, or? <laughs> well, <That's part. laughs> well, you know, I I wanted to have it written so that you know it's like suddenly coming upon something from somebody you haven't thought about in a long time. Say that somebody you loved and who has passed dropped um, was an embroiderist or so sewed, and you're walking across the carpet and suddenly you feel the prick of their sewing needle, and you're just brought into their the awareness of their presence, which is the sudden daydream. It brings you back to a memory. That's spooky. Yep, it's <laughs> life. <laughs> I would like to just so, jump in. Uh, did you say there really was a needle in the carpet? <laughs> it's a poem. <laughs> That's part of the beauty of it. It, it could yeah. be, or it could be an imagination or a dream. So, but the, the image itself is concrete enough that it allows us to enter the poem. I think that's what makes it so effective, you know, and yeah, you have the balance of concrete and abstract. Um, but yeah, Michael Nichols Wisdom, that's a really cool last name, by the way. Thank you. The married names pick each other's names. Oh, okay. I'm the wisdom and she's the Nichols. Oh, I see. <clears throat> but uh, I have, I would just like to say that I have had extensive experience composing haiku in relation to dream states. Mm. Um, I have developed a practice of cultivating my liminal sleep. And there's two, there's two forms of liminal sleep. There's, there's hypnopompic, mm -hmm. where you go from waking to sleeping. Mm -hmm. And there's Agogic when you go from sleeping to waking. And um, these are very creatively potent dream states or consciousness states. I, I've, I've developed a, a, a protocol for wait, for lengthening my, 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 my hypnagogic states. Um, 
and I've, I, I, that's why, you know, the first thing I do is I, I get up in the morning and I'm, I'm, I, I wake from a dream. Uh, and I immediately go to my chair in the living room and sit there cross-legged in the living room with a pad of paper and a pen beside me. And I continue the dream. And I, in this liminal state, you can interact consciously with your dream. And I write down things that come to me. And, and some of them have, come, have resulted in award-winning haiku. And some of them have just resulted in just haiku, period. Uh, so I've done this a lot. Uh, and I've learned how to prolong and work with, when you're in that dream state, you can, you can talk with people from your waking life and have creative conversations with them. You can solve problems from your waking life. Uh, and you, poems, lines from poems and phrases from poems come, in, come into consciousness. Um, mm -hmm. So if you, want to, if you want to learn how to prolong your hypnagogic state, uh, everybody has a clock. Everybody has a clock with an alarm, like a phone or a or a clock by your bed. Just set the alarm for getting up at a certain time like you always normally would. Make sure you have time to use in the morning. And uh, when it goes off and you waken, hit snooze immediately. And you will, and, and it will go, you will expend that four or five minutes in your snooze and you'll, you'll be in that state. And if it goes off again, hit snooze again. Keep doing this and you will, you will be in a state between sleeping and waking. And fun things happen then. Hmm. That's very interesting. I appreciate you sharing that, Michael. Hmm. Um, yeah, on that note of keeping track of dreams too, I know a lot of people, they keep a dream journal, but I don't know how many of us have translated that into writing haiku, um, but one thing I've started to do is I keep track of the dreams I do remember right when I wake up. And then um, so far I've written a high boon based on an actual dream I had, mm -hmm. but it's written in such a way that we talked about this too in our group, how some poems, you don't need to use the word dream in it to convey a dreamlike quality. And mm -hmm. that by itself offers some different interesting interpretations, but long story short, when I shared my high boon with my uh, Portland haiku group, they didn't see it as a dream. They saw it as just like a an actual event of like visiting a different country. <laughs> but at the same time, you can read it. You know how dreams, your mind tries to make sense of something that seems slightly out of place. So I, I won't go in depth here, but I'll just say that the dream was based in Greece, but yet there was this African child in the city. And it seemed like dreamlike in my dream, but in the high boon, people thought it had to do with refugees. So I thought that was very interesting. Like they didn't see it as a dream. So yeah, I can see multiple interpretations, but um, I appreciate you mentioning too, Michael, the um, solving problems in our quote unquote waking state mm -hmm. in that yeah, in between state, the hypnagogic states and yeah, that, that can be a useful tool for us. Um, I think a lot comes up in our dreams and our subconscious that can be useful in our waking state for writing high. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's very, very you know, learning to learning how to interact with your unconscious is is very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's like every time I go to bed at night, I think to myself, okay, here's this, here's this blank stage, the curtain's about to go up. And, right. and we get mm. these little these little haiku dramas sometimes, you know. Mm. Michael. Stage. Yeah, Michael. Yes. I just wanted to let you know, um, all of you, that I worked for the Stanford Sleep Studies program for oh. a couple of years under <laughs> Dr. Dement is his name. Yes. Um, yes. You know of him, okay. Uh, and he, it was the source basically of my keeping track of uh, rapid eye movement, um, the place between sleep and being awake. It's not either. Um, and it actually produced one, my third novel, which is called Halfway There. Actually, it's halfway here with the T crossed off. 
Um, and it's people who are, um, they're communicating while they're in REM sleep, they're meeting and uh, solving problems or having adventures. Oh, how cool. Wow. Just thought I'd drop that in there. Thank oh, you. that's interesting. So did you participate in that study and did that um, like give you that idea to start um, the heron's nest? No, actually, uh, oh, okay. no, it had nothing to do with the heron's nest. <laughs> uh, and uh, I didn't participate as a dreamer, uh, oh, okay. though this is all a dream, isn't it? I think, you know, um, I was actually participating as a, a, a lab tech oh, in the studies. Uh, so I don't want to go into that right now. It's right. It, we're, we'd get, be getting off of the haiku part. Oh, okay. um, but I'd be happy to communicate with you guys about it uh, sometime after this meeting or whatever. Wow, that's cool. Thanks for sharing. That's interesting. Um, I'm also noticing in the chat a lot of interesting dream poems, some of them previously published, some of them new. Um, don't know if we have time to go through all of these, but um, I appreciate everyone sharing in the chat. Um, I see. Jacob, I see some hands up. I don't know whether you can see them or not. Can you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, who, who, who had their hand raised first? Oh, Gregory you know? Longnecker and Gary Gay and Kate Jones all have their hands up. Okay, yeah, let's start with Greg. Um, well, I was going to say, first of all, I think it's interesting that there are so many uses of the term dream. You can have mm -hmm. a dream wish, a daydream. Yep. People were talking about this a little bit. Um, yep. And there are just so many different ways we can look at dreams. Yep. I think it's... I agree with you. Some of the most fulfilling ones are the ones that come out of sleep, but there are other times that you can use the term dream that people may think you're talking about a real dream, but in fact, it's more of a, a desire or a wish to do something. Right. So that's mm -hmm. all. I'll leave it with that. No, for sure. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I think that's great too. It offers a lot of flexibility, um, especially in writing haiku and writing in our dream journals and just writing in, in general, I think, you know, all different kinds of writing. Yeah. Um, was Gary next, Gary Gay? Uh, yeah, so Jacob, would you consider the dream poems haiku or sinru? You oh, I think that depends on a lot of things, right? Uh, I think it would depend on the on the person too. That that's an, an interesting conversation. I don't even know if I can get into it to be honest with you, because I think a lot of it it depends on who you ask. Do you know what I mean? Like some poets will say, "Oh, that's a senru." Like the poet who who wrote the poem says it's a senru, and then other people would say, "No, it's more like a haiku." And then you have the hybrid forms, where there's a little bit of mix of both. <laughs> But I'm not going to get into that myself, to be honest. I think it depends on the person. Yeah, for sure. But uh, what do you think? Um, well, you know, I've been, I'm, I'm actually going to do a talk on Sinru, and so I've started thinking about it myself. Oh, okay. And, it, and when I analyze the poems, they all, because it's a human that's dreaming them, and you're creating a space that doesn't exist, they seem to be more Sinru to me than that. Well, I call them haiku as well. And I've had uh, some published under haiku. Uh, I'm not thinking they're really Sinru because, uh, you know, all the elements in there are kind of fantasy made up. Even if you're talking about something like you see yourself in the woods running from a lion, well, you're not really in the woods and there's not really a lion. And while those are nature elements, the reality is you, you made it all up, right? I mean, the human made them all up. So right. they feel like they must be more Sinru. I'd be interested in hearing other people's opinion on it, but as I analyze it, that's where I've come to. Right. Yeah, I understand for sure. Yeah, that's an interesting conversation that I think could go on for eternity, to be honest oh, with yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying we need to debate what, what is a syndrome, because right, right. we've been debating that for 40 years. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Greg, Greg Longnecker shared his screen, so we're looking at a Zoom thing here. But I'm not sure if you wanted to share something, Greg, or do you want to stop sharing your screen? I noticed um, Kate Jones, you have your hand raised. Do you want to share something? She has her hand from a previous session. Oh, okay. Maybe she forgot to 
put the hand down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I noticed Ray's hand. Your your hand is raised. Do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, I'm trying. I, I don't know who's sharing their screen, but kind yeah, of Greg Greg's there. still on screen share, so he needs to just click off of screen share, so we can see each other. Do you know how to do that, Greg? With the sh oh, there you go. There we go. We're off. Okay, good. You got it. So, Jacob, thank you for first of all for this is a it's a great topic, and I, I really yeah. enjoyed collaborating with Sarita because I couldn't get into a breakup room. Oh, freak out room. But uh, I started out writing a haiku and then it seemed to go into a tanka. So this is the tanka. Rapid eye movement. Wing wax melts as we skim the sun. The last white feather fades to black. Mm. Mm. Thanks for sharing. I really like the last line. Cause I feel like I'm drifting into sleep, you know? Yeah. 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 I, I like that. Yeah. Mm. And I, I had just a comment about, about haiku versus senru. I know it's a big, big discussion. Um, rather than talk about, you know, reality versus say dream state, it's more in terms of, for me, uh, whether you're talking about images that you could be experiencing or perceiving versus states of being and feelings that come out of it. And that ends up being the difference for me. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing. Um, I noticed Anna, is it Anna Cates? You have your hand raised? Do you wanna unmute? Um, this is a, a dream haiku I just wrote, right? That's what we're sharing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Firefly lighting on a camper's dream, autumn equinox. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thanks for sharing. Um, there's another thing I want to mention briefly. I know we're running out of time, but um, in our small group, Richard Mata was saying how he frequently lucid dreams. And that's a whole nother interesting conversation. Um, that's It's found its way into a few of my own haiku, but um, when you're aware that you're dreaming and you can control the dream and you, yet you can have more freedom in the dream, that, that's an interesting space to explore. And then, um, yeah, maybe consider writing some haiku or even just like a dream journal, you know, describing the experience. Yeah. But um, just to finish, I know there's a lot of interesting haiku in the chat, and I'm grateful for people sharing. So I'm going to save the chat later. Um, I know a lot of us will. <laughs> um, but I'll just post a few last links here um, on some new projects that I've been working on. Just give me one second. Um, so in the... Um, sharing of poetry in like the, in the open mic. I had read some poems by George Kozanski, um, which is Nick's father who passed away some years ago, but um, he wrote some really excellent haiku that's in a new anthology called Desert Rain. And Desert Rain is dedicated to Martha Magenta, who a lot of you know either through her writing, she was a award-winning poet um, from the UK and yeah, she passed away a few years ago. So we dedicated Desert Rain to her and also to the people who don't have access to clean water. So I forgot the source, but um, one source said that over 600 million people don't have access to clean water. So all the proceeds are gonna be donated to organizations that are helping people get water, building wells, um, just doing our small part. And then, um, it's uh, the anthology is in three volumes. We have the Haiku Senru, we have Tonka, and then the volume three is Haibun. So I posted the links in the chat if you want to check out the Desert Rain books. Um, also, the Haiku commentary blog that Nicholas Kozanski runs with Hifsa, Ashraf, and myself posted that link. Um, I post a lot of my poetry on my website too. I've just, if you want to read it for free, is that first link. I post a lot of my poems. 
And um, my very new book, Unplugged, I just published it a few days ago. Um, that's a book of haiku and tonka, and that's the last link there. Um, yeah, and I really appreciate you guys' time. It's a very interesting discussion. I know we could dive really deep in maybe future conversations to keep this uh, subject alive, because I think it's really important for um, psychoanalysis and connections uh, when talking about how dreams can overlap in our lives and how we relate to each other and what's hidden in the subconscious that can come out in our haiku and in our dreams. So thank you very much.